All right, guys, good morning. So just forewarning for you, this is not a fishing video. We're gonna be talking about um, some technical camera stuff in relation to the video content that I film and put on YouTube and Facebook. A lot of you guys that follow my channel are content creators yourselves. Most of you probably fishing content creators, and chances are that most of you guys are probably using one of these guys right here. If you're like me, maybe you're even using two of them. This is a GoPro 11. This is the main workhorse camera for my channel. Like 90% of the shots that you guys see are from this camera right here. Now this one here is a GoPro 10 Black. And this is my backup camera. And of course, it is no secret that these newer generation GoPros have some serious problems. The main one, overheating. These things overheat like crazy. And then the second issue that these newer generation GoPros seem to have pretty bad is freezing. I've put in a ton of time with these cameras um, filming these videos. And I've also put in quite a bit of money to figure out how to overcome these issues. And I finally have these cameras to a point where they seem to be working pretty well. I very rarely have overheating issues with these cameras anymore. I still have freezing issues, but I've learned how to overcome it and make it a lot easier and a lot more quick to get the camera back in action. So um, we're gonna discuss those two issues today. I'm gonna show you guys everything that I have done to overcome those issues. And hopefully that will help you guys be able to enjoy your GoPro cameras. So I'm gonna try to not get off topic too much, but I do just wanna touch on with all of these new advanced cameras that are coming out like the DJI and the Insta360 cameras, both of those companies are making some awesome action cameras. Why are, why are you cho choosing to stick with GoPro even though that they have these issues? Even with the issues that these things have, I really, really like the GoPros when I bought the 10. Uh, before I purchased it, I did a lot of research comparing these cameras with the other um, options that are on the market and even though that those cameras are fantastic, the features and the quality of footage, especially that these GoPros are able to produce for me is worth it um, to deal with those two issues, especially the 11 and the 12, the sensors in these cameras have been um, enlarged and updated and they're able to just put out an insane quality of footage and the color is just so vibrant and everything is just you know so sharp and so perfect. Even the footage from the other two major manufacturers, it's good, but it's it's not this good in my opinion. And then the other aspect of it is the features that these things offer, um, like the, the uh, Hyperview that the 11 and 12 offer for me is perfect for chest mount shots. It's able to see so wide that you end up getting a lot of that stuff that we were missing before with even super view on the 10 series. Okay, so moving into the first issue that we're gonna discuss, the overheating issue. I do just wanna say before we get into it, the 11 seems to overheat a lot worse than the 10 does. I've had a lot less issues with the 10 and honestly, I've been super impressed with the 10. With that being said, so what have I done to overcome the overheating issue? So the first thing that I have done is I've eliminated the battery. One thing that I've learned really helps the overheating issue is removing the battery. So how do we use the, the camera without the battery inserted? So the first thing that you're gonna have to do obviously is open up the camera door. Once you do that, you'll see inside here, um, there's a USB-C charging port. So what you can do is you can run a USB-C cord and it has to be a cord that um, carries enough power. So the ones that actually come with your GoPro cameras um, work great. Some cheaper cables that you can just buy at like Walmart for a couple bucks or whatever, they're not gonna carry enough power to power your camera. What you can do is you can plug that USB-C right into the port there. And then you can take the other end and you can plug it into a power pack like this. These are what I use to power both of my GoPro cameras when I'm out filming. Both of these are 10,000 milliamp hour power packs and that's plenty to get me through a day or even two days worth of filming on a single charge. And now you're gonna notice something else. If you take a look at, at my camera here with the open port, there's no battery in it. And that is a huge thing that GoPro has done starting I believe with the 10 series. So you'll see no battery inside the camera turn my power pack on, I'm gonna turn the GoPro camera on, and it powers right up with no problem. So doing this by eliminating the battery and completely bypassing it and running off external power, that's the biggest thing, in my opinion, that you can do to eliminate the overheating issues on these cameras. For some reason, having that battery inserted, even the, the new Enduro batteries that are coming on the 11 and the 12, they're great for cold weather, which is really what GoPro designed them for, so they would last longer in the cold, they suck for hot weather. These cameras overheat so fast, especially in the summertime, having the battery inserted. But here's the problem with this. You've got a wide open battery door. All of your electronics and internals of the camera are now exposed to the elements. These are waterproof, 
with the door closed and locked. With the door open, this camera is no longer waterproof and you'll kill it instantly if you get water inside there. So this is a problem. So what do we do about this? Well, that brings me to the next thing that I'm gonna talk about that actually helps us also with the freezing issue and also some other, some other uh, helpful things. So in order to um, be able to run your camera without a battery and also keep it fairly safe from the elements, there's an accessory that you're gonna need to buy. So these are the media mods that GoPro has created to go around these cameras. They started these with the eight series um, the 7 series and back, you don't have this option. Um, the 10, the 11, and the 12 all use the same one. The 8 has its own, so just be aware of that. Now, what this does is this is essentially a case that allows you to do several different things media-wise with your camera. And it, in my opinion, these are critical if you're someone that's going to be out um, filming regular videos. And if you look inside there, it has a USB-C plug that pairs up perfectly with the USB-C plug on your camera. So you're gonna slide your camera in, it's gonna plug into that USB-C plug, and you're gonna close the door over it. Now note, I still don't have a battery inside this camera, so it's not gonna power up, it's not gonna do anything. The beauty of these media mods is, if you look on the back here, they've got these little doors. This middle door opens up, you've got a USB-C port, and that is where you can plug in the USB-C cord from your power pack and now you can power your camera. So now for the most part, we've solved our overheating issue. That's the big one. And also what you've now done is you have sealed off the battery door. So these media mods are not waterproof. You cannot stick this underwater in the media mod, but they are, however, water resistant. So if you take a look in there, you'll see um, there is a rubber seal that when you press this camera in and then you lock it into place, it pushes the camera into that rubber seal and seals the door off for the most part. So these media mods are a great way to run external power to your camera and still have them at least be water resistant. I have this thing up on the front of my kayak in third person view. I have the one on my chest. Um, when we're going out like offshore, breaking through the surf, water spraying all over these cameras, never had an issue um, with water getting into the battery door. Now I'm sure if you took this camera and you tried to stick it underwater like this, you would destroy it, water would seep in there. But at least in terms of, of spray, even salt water spray getting on this camera inside the media mod, they do pretty good. Now we have the issue of the camera freezing, okay? This is the other major issue that these new GoPros, especially the 11, seems to have. For some reason, when it's filming, it'll just freeze. Now, the cool part about it is when the camera freezes, so if, if you're recording and you look down and it's just frozen, it's not counting anymore, you can't touch the screen, whatever, it doesn't, actually mess up the footage. It actually is still recording that entire time. So when you pull the battery out and reset the camera, when you restart it, you're gonna get a screen that says repairing footage or something like that. And what it's doing is it's going back, it's repairing that footage that you filmed while the camera was frozen. And then once it's done, it's gonna give you a little check mark and it's gonna go back just to its normal screen where you can record or do whatever. So you don't actually lose footage from it freezing, but it's annoying because you have to open the battery door, take the battery out, and put the battery back in, close the door, turn it back on. It's just a hassle, and if it's doing it a lot, like mine does, you're gonna be doing that frequently. It's a pain in the butt. So here's the beauty of also running an external power pack. This is the other benefit of this. I still don't have a battery inside my camera, okay? And that's important to this. You have to have, you have to be running the camera battery list for this to work. So let's say I was recording and the screen is frozen right now. In a normal circumstance with the battery inserted, what I would have to do if this camera froze right now is I would have to open this, pull the camera out, pull the battery out, that would shut the camera off, put the battery back in, reinsert this into my media mod, shut my door, turn the camera back on, and now I can record. That's a lot to do if you're hooked into a fish or you know something's happening and you need to get that camera back on quick, okay? You're gonna miss a lot of footage doing that and that's one of the problems that I was having. But with the battery, not inserted into the camera and running off of external power through the media mod, all you have to do in order to reset a frozen screen, pop the cable out, put the cable back in. Camera turns right back on, okay? So this obviously is not a fix per se for the freezing problem, um, but it's a solution, we'll call it a workaround. It's a workaround to the freezing problem. Does it work? Yes. Does it work good? It does. 
Would I prefer the camera not freeze in the first place? Absolutely. But at least by doing it this way, I don't have to remove the camera from the mod. I don't have to pull a battery out or, or open the door or any of that stuff. It's a pretty good workaround. It speeds things up a lot. And like I said, the beauty of it is even though the camera is frozen, it still records your footage. So usually, honestly, what I will do if I look down and I realize that my camera's frozen and I'm on a fish or something like that, I'll usually just leave it alone because it's still recording even though the screen is frozen. And then once I land the fish, I'll usually just pop the power cord real quick, plug it back in and reset the camera. Um, and then once I turn the camera back on, it'll do that thing where it says repairing your file and it'll still save all that footage. So I've had this happen while fighting a fish many, many times and I've never lost the footage of fighting the fish. It works every single time. So doing this with the media mod and an external power pack without the battery and the camera solved both major problems. So I had to switch cameras. So the camera that's recording now is actually my GoPro 10. Um, I also took the microphone off of it because I'm gonna show you guys something really cool that you can also do with the media mod. So I do apologize, the audio is probably not very great right now. An added benefit of using the media mods, in addition to all the things that we've already talked about, is these media mods right underneath where your USB-C power port is on the back here, they have another door. And if you open that up, that is a microphone port. They also have a cold shoe on the top and they have a cold shoe uh, over here on the side. And what all this means is you can use an external microphone on your GoPros and completely overhaul and enhance the audio in your videos. So you can use um, a wired microphone. For example, I have this one right here. This is just your typical shotgun microphone. You can plug that cord into the microphone port on the back of your camera right here. Okay, microphones like this, you can get fantastic quality ones that have great audio. Me personally, for the past um, about six months now, I've been using a wireless microphone that I've been super impressed with. Um, this is actually a knockoff of um, the DJI wireless microphone that they've been making for a little while. This is by a company called Full Aim. It's the Full Aim X5. And um, I've actually been super impressed with this. I got it off Amazon for like half the price of the DJI. I'm gonna leave a link to it in the description of this video. I do make a little bit of commission off that link if you guys decide to pick one of these up. Um, it does help me out, so I would appreciate it. You have the receiver. So this is what's going to mount onto the cold shoe on my GoPro. So I'm gonna slide this right into the cold shoe. I'm gonna take my microphone cord. There's an out right here. I'm gonna plug that into the out. And then I'm going to plug this into the microphone port on the back of the camera. Also in this case, what we have are two wireless microphones. They come with the little um, wind buffs that you can see on top, which if you're outside filming in windy conditions, these dissipate the wind, so you don't have that over your microphone. Um, I've used this in like 25 mile an hour wind before, and it completely eliminates the wind noise. It's, it's fantastic. But going back to what we're talking about in terms of GoPros and media mods, is not only do these media mods virtually eliminate the two major issues that these GoPros have, they also give you the added benefit of being able to run an external microphone, completely enhancing the audio for your videos, which is gonna give your viewers a much better viewing experience. So now that I've shown that to you guys, I'm gonna take this off and I'm gonna put it back on the recording camera so you guys can have good audio again. Okay, so here's the final thing that we're gonna talk about in this video before we close it out. Um, I'm sure a lot of you guys are probably wondering, th this is a lot of crap to wear on your on your body. So how do I efficiently wear this stuff, okay? That's the problem with this. So this, this solution that I've come up with that fixes these two major issues and gets your cameras running right, it adds a lot of stuff. It adds the media mod, it adds a battery pack, it adds a cable. And in my case, I use an external microphone. So now I also have a microphone receiver that goes on here. I have another cable that goes on here and I have a microphone. You got to do this in a way where it's not only comfortable, but it's not going to be in your way of fishing because fishing is the most important thing. That's what you're out there doing and having big bulky cameras in your way, catching your, your reel on them. Um, it's just not efficient. I use a chesty. So this is not the GoPro chesty. This is a knockoff that I got off of Amazon for a couple bucks, but here's the benefit of doing the chesty. Everything, all of this equipment that we've been talking about, I can mount on this chesty and have it all as one unit. I've got the camera on there. Now, if we flip this over on the back side, this is the flat part that will go against my chest. If you take a look, um, there's the strap here and you can actually pull that open. So what I do with that is I take my power pack 
and I slip it right in there just like that. And that's gonna hold my power pack nice and tight between the chesty and my body so it doesn't slip out. It's gonna be completely out of my way. So we'll put the chesty on. Now I've got this cable, okay? Cables suck. So what I do is I'll take this cable and I will wrap it around this left um, shoulder strap until it's fairly tight and then I'll take it and just plug it right in. It, it's very low profile and it feels very similar to not using the power pack at all. Cable's out of the way, it's not a big deal. And then all I have to do is take my microphone receiver that goes on the camera. I'm gonna put it in the cold shoe on top of the camera. And then I take this and I go down underneath that power cable straight into the mic port. I've got the wireless microphone right here, so I just take that, it's got a clip on the back, Clip it right there, and that's it. It's a little bit more bulky than just having a, you know, just a plain old GoPro with a battery in, um, but it's not bad, especially if you get a small size power pack like this one. It really doesn't feel that much different. I don't really notice that this stuff is even there. So that's how I use the Media Mod to overcome the issue of overheating and freezing with the GoPro. It gives me the benefit of using the microphone, and that's how I wear it all just like that to keep it nice and compact and out of my way. And then in terms of my third person camera that I use on the kayak, I've got this little Yak Attack um, camera boom pole. So what I do with this is I have um, this little rubber like zip tie kind of thing. It's just a little like gear tie down. And I use this to hold um, my battery pack to this pole right up here next to the camera. So I can put the camera on there. Um, in the media mod, I have a media mod for both of my cameras, including the third person one. So I'll put it in the media mod so I can run it without the battery in it so I don't have overheating issues. I can put this right here, strap it down using this little yellow gear tie, and then I can run the power cable from this directly up to the camera. Now, one issue um, that I have is having this um, camera boom out there with the GoPro on the end of it, especially when we're going offshore, going through the surf or whatever, that camera being up on the front of the kayak is a lot more prone to, to salt water spraying up on it. So typically what I'll do with this is I have um, one of these little phone waterproof things for when you're like swimming or whatever. So I will take this um, and what I will do is I will put this inside of here with that power cable sticking out. And then I can actually seal this, tighten that gear thing down. And then I've got my cable here. So I'll just wrap this around there a couple times and plug it straight into the back of the camera. And that's it, super simple. Like I said, um, I know this video is not gonna be for everyone. I'm sure that only a fraction of my regular audience has even watched to this point of the video. Um, but for those of you guys that are content creators yourself that have been having issues with your GoPros overheating and freezing, um, hopefully this video helps you out and, and helps you overcome some of those issues. I appreciate you guys watching. Um, as always, thank you guys so much for all the support that we've been getting on the channel um, here recently. Things are really starting to move fast, um, pushing towards 10,000 subscribers. It's, it's awesome to see. It's a really great feeling. Also, just this morning, uploaded the last Alaska video, video number three out of the series. Um, go check it out, guys. I put a lot of work into this one. I think it turned out excellent. Lots of cinematic stuff. Um, lots of, of camera work that I am very, very happy and very proud of. So um, go check it out if you haven't seen it already. Otherwise, if you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that. That way you don't miss any new content. I probably won't do much more of these tech kind of videos because this is not what my channel is. Um, you know, based on, but if you guys did enjoy this and it helped you out, I guess let me know down in the comments um, if there's anything else you want me to talk about. I, you know, I'm not opposed to it. I just don't think too many people are going to enjoy this video. And I think YouTube algorithm is going to absolutely hate it. So <laughs> with that being said, uh, yeah, I've been talking for like 20 minutes. So let's, let's, let's call it right there, guys. Um, thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. I look forward to seeing you on the next one.